There are different ways of dealing with reality, aren't there? There is the rational way of interacting with reality. There is the rational way that means that you try to get a grasp of reality. You try to grab whatever it is you're focusing your attention on, you put it down, you look at it, you dissect it, you categorize it, and the purpose of that is to be able to manipulate it. Either by directly manipulating it, by making an aspect, a part of reality, do what you want it to do, or manipulating it as concepts in your mind. The other way of relating with reality is simply taking it as it comes. Being there, being in the thick of it, but accepting that reality is whatever it is and that it will present itself to you in whatever way it comes. And that, of course, also includes the acceptance, the realization that there are other agents out there in reality like yourself, human beings like yourself, for example, with their own internal way of looking at things, they are other to you. And you will be, be, be relating with them. You will be in a relationship with them. You will be engaging with them. And that is a two-way process. That is not a matter of you pinning something down, categorizing it, getting a grip on it, and then manipulating it. That is impossible in that way of dealing with reality, dealing with the other, dealing with other agents in your vicinity. That is a important realization when you're talking to other people, when you're engaging with other people. They are the other. They are somebody that you are interacting with. They cannot be categorized. They cannot be pinned down. Now, obviously, that is a generic observation and in specific circumstances that may not be exactly the case. You can put a person in a situation in which their degrees of freedom are severely restricted and in which you can actually quite accurately predict what they will be doing, how they will be behaving and you will be able to manipulate such people. And of course, we all know that that happens all the time, through advertising, through legislation, and so on and so forth. We are constantly being manipulated. But that is that first way of interacting with reality that I was speaking about. And it cannot encompass the whole of reality. Even those who are engaged in a discipline that is completely left brain focused, so to speak, that is completely rational, such as mathematics, have eventually come around to this realization. To wit, for example, Kurt Gödel, who eventually figured out that a self-referential system that is internally consistent can never be complete, can never completely describe or encompass itself. And that is an important understanding, that is an important realization when you are dealing with reality on that basis to realize that there is a limit. Nobody knows what that limit is. Nobody knows to what extent we will be able to rationalize with reality, but there is a limit to being able to rationalize reality, to being able to engage with reality on that basis. And beyond that, we will fail to subject it to our will. We will fail to be able to pin it down and dissect it. And that is not necessarily a bad thing, because in the end, reality does transcend all of us. And it would be quite depressing, really, if reality was so simplistic as to being able to sort of fit in one of our heads so that we could completely grasp it, understand it, and manipulate it. So, I am not necessarily sad about that. Nor is this an anti-scientific way of looking at things either, because in the end, we will always have the need 
to manipulate certain aspects of reality in order to achieve certain things. And for that, the scientific outlook is perfect, it's ideal, it's the best way of going about such things. But there is also this relationship with the other. There's this engaging with reality, taking reality as it comes, simply being there, simply accepting that reality will throw curveballs at you and that you sometimes will simply not know what's going to happen next. And that is not, like I said, it's not an anti-scientific thing, nor is it a defeatist thing. It is a simple acknowledgement of the complexities of reality, of what's out there, of that which is something that you have no immediate grasp over. That doesn't include just other people, the other, reality as a whole, but even yourself. There are aspects, aspects of yourself that you haven't got a complete grip over. And that is not, not a bad thing either. It's not a bad thing to realize that you will always remain, to some extent, a mystery unto, unto yourself. This brings me then to why I am a dietist and why I reject any argument, any attempt by anybody to engage me in a dialogue, in an argument, in a debate or anything like that about their God. Because in the end, even though to me God is a meaningless three-letter word and I myself do not hold a God concept, nor will I ever be tempted to do such a thing, what I do realize is that to those who do hold such concepts, what they are relating to in their minds is something that is definitely, that must by definition almost, be something that transcends them, that is bigger than themselves, that's greater than themselves, those are the, the, the words that people who are proselytizing about their God always tend to use, aren't they? Their gods transcend their own existence. And as such, it is by their very nature, almost, going to be impossible to communicate about such things, to communi communicate about such gods, because they would not allow themselves to be pinned down like that. They could never be put in a position where we could encompass them, where we could grasp their existence, where we could dissect them, categorize them, manipulate them, as we have to do with certain aspects of reality. Considering that that is whatever such gods may be, that is what they by necessity have to be, it is clear therefore then that whenever a fundamentalist talks about their God, they are always talking about their God as if it is something that is so easily conceptualized, that can be dissected, that can be communicated. The fundamentalist is the person who thinks that they possess about their so-called God a truth that is communicable and that can be imposed on other people and that other people can be demanded to subject themselves to. Their God is the God of objective morality, for example, and other such babbling nonsense. That is the reason why anybody who tries to proselytize their God to anybody else must by definition be mistaken. Their God, by the simple fact that they are trying to communicate about it, cannot exist cannot exist as something that transcends their personal existence, that transcends our existence as a species, for example. Knowing that means that you know that whenever somebody talks about God, whenever somebody who claims they believe in a God talks about their God with the intent of proselytizing their belief system to you, they must be mistaken. They must be wrong their God does not exist and it can be rejected out of hand without having to think any further about what exactly that person is saying 
and whether there may or may not be any truth to it. There isn't. Case dismissed. Not interested. Don't talk to me about your God. Thank you.